Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today, we're asking a rhetorical question. What is the most watch you can get for under $10,000? Now hold that thought, because we're looking at the Ebel 1911 Perpetual Calendar Chronograph, 40 millimeters and 18 karat white gold. You can buy this Zenith El Primero powered Perpetual Calendar Chronograph in white gold on our website, watchyouwant.com. And please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch with additional high resolution images and complete pricing details. Now on my wrist, Six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. This watch is a confluence of icons. Now the Ebel 1911 grew out of the sport classic of the late 1970s, named after the year that Ebel was founded, itself a contraction of the founder's names. The 1911 is far and away the flagship and the styling icon of its namesake manufacturer. Moreover, as part of the InvestCorp conglomerate during the mid to late 90s, Zenith and Ebel co-developed movements, especially the perpetual calendar module featured on this watch here, as well as a line of academy level Zenith El Primero Grand Complications. Now 40 millimeters across the round of the case that's a bit of a deceptive measurement because of the crown guards, the crown and the chronograph pushers. It really does feel like a cushion case on the wrist and it wears like one. Now in terms of thickness, it's neither exceptionally thick nor exceptionally thin. Being 13 millimeters thick, it does feature a nice sloped case flank and bezel, so it plays as a slim 13 millimeters, easily giving your sleeve a little bit of a ramp up and over its flanks. Now from lug to lug, it is wonderfully compact. 44.5 millimeters, it wears like a 36 millimeter Rolex date just across the wrist, so it's viable on wrists as small as 13 centimeters in circumference. It's important to note that subsequent versions of this watch from Ebel were 45 millimeters, even 48 millimeters in the BTR family. They took the same movement, but cased it in an impossibly huge vessel that simply overwhelms many wrists, my own included. So I like this solution and this less common watch. Now, entirely 18 karat white gold. The watch also features a white gold solid case back and a rather deep case profile. So it is very heavy on the wrist, not oppressively heavy, but you're impressed and honestly gratified by the heft of this watch when you're wearing it. You're not going to forget that it's there. Now there is beautiful contrast about the case, a beautiful satin finish contrasting with a high polished bezel and high polished bezel bolts. The watch also features a wonderfully integrated look, subbing out the bracelet often seen on the 1911 with a factory strap with conforming end pieces. Now it does have a little bit of pivot to it, so unlike many conforming end pieces which can cause the watch to flare outward and fight a smaller wrist, this one allows you to pull the strap straight down. Again, it's a great fit for a smaller wrist, very comfortable and very stylish. It does have minimal swell at the lugs, a little bit of bolstering to make for a very clean visual transition with a lightly contrasting ecru stitch. It terminates in a beautiful white gold clasp and Ebel was doing something back in the late 90s that a lot of watchmakers are doing today, most notably Breitling, featuring a deployant clasp that effectively tucks and hides excess strap. You'll notice that the strap is neither perforated nor equipped with minder loops. Very very clean when buckled. It's also wonderfully secure thanks to this exceptionally high grade white gold buckle. It's very heavy for a buckle, again not oppressively, but conveniently because it counterbalances the watch head and it prevents the watch from trying to hula hoop on the wrist. Now the dial balance is outstanding. There's a gorgeous off-white color to it. It's not silver, it's not white, it's a sort of gentle cream and it beautifully contrasts with the high polished applied Roman numerals and the high polished hands as well as the polished chapter rings of the sub registers. Now there's a beautiful splash of color at six o'clock thanks to the moon phase and it features a true perpetual calendar layout with hours, minutes, seconds in uh, coexistence with leap year, month, day, date, moon phase. It's a lot of information, but with a gorgeous balanced cruciform layout, it seems wonderfully at peace with the proportions of the dial, and it's functionally excellent in as much as once you're used to the layout, you can quickly discern chronograph functions, civil time, and calendar indications. It also features a sporting tachymetric scale outboard that doubles as a nice visual transition down from the bezel to the dial base. Now inside, it's an El Primero, but the combination of the perpetual calendar module and the El Primero is known by Zenith as the caliber 4003. Now it's been featured on watches priced up to six figures and beyond. So to be able to get it in a sub $10,000 watch that 
On top of everything else is an iconic design, arguably more iconic than any design in Zenith's own catalog. It's the best of both worlds. You have that gorgeous design from Ebel with the incredible engineering of Zenith underneath. Really, it's the last element that Zenith never had, the look to match the El Primero's engineering might. Now, it still features 31 joules, a 52-hour power reserve, a crisp column wheel function selector. Everything you expect from the El Primero is here, right down to the 10 beats per second, the 5 hertz escapement. Again, this is the kind of thing that combines all of the best elements that connoisseurs love in a single model. You can see this remarkable Ebel 1911 perpetual calendar chronograph powered by the Zenith El Primero perpetual caliber and buy it on our website watchyouwant.com.